up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Progressive Gentleman Podcast. We're your hosts, Matt and Dan, and as always, we just want to thank you for the support and taking the time to listen to us nerd out about music. Uh, today we got a special one. Um, it's a new segment that we're going to do. Um, we're kind of keeping up with the theme. Our last one was a new one as well. Um, we're calling this one Artist Spotlight. Uh, in these episodes, we kind of want to focus in on one particular band or artist and just kind of go through them, give a review of their music, what we think, favorite tours, if we've seen them live. And uh, and yeah, I think the first band we want to do for this is Between the Buried and Me. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely think this one probably makes the most sense for for us since it's kind of our for, first foray into progressive music and especially heavy progressive music. Um, and you know, we both kind of started liking them around the same time and, uh, and, you know, have followed them along their musical journey. So I definitely think this one makes sense to, to start with. They've got a nice long, uh, list of albums we can discuss and, you know, a bunch of history and their sound has changed a lot. So definitely looking forward to talking about them. Yeah, for sure. Into it and start with, uh. Uh, or do we want to do a little background first? Yeah, let's do a little background. I mean, it's it's definitely one of our favorite bands of all time. I mean, speaking personally, but I'm pretty sure for you as well. So uh, it's going to be pretty easy to talk about, I think. But yeah, background wise, um, so made up of Tommy Rogers on vocals, Paul Wagoner and Dusty Waring on guitar, Dan Briggs at bass, and Blake Richardson on drums. Um, He's a monster. You all, he is a monster. Blake eats Stakey. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you all probably know that already, but you know, just in case you've been living under a rock, we figured we'd go through this a little bit. Uh, background of the band, they're from North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina to be specific. Um, a cool little tidbit that we found whenever we were just kind of messing around on the internet was that they got their name from a Counting Crows lyric. That's uh, just so strange to me. <laughs> I just like, of all the bands in the world that they could get their name from, it's like, a band that seems to have the least influence on their musical tastes. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe they do listen to them a lot, but that just, I, I, I do feel just... like, I do feel like I see them at least dusty, especially like on social media, posting different songs from like nineties bands and stuff like that. And so I, I, I think maybe perhaps in some form, uh, nineties bands kind of had a background or an influence on their sort of progression. Uh, becoming a band sort of in the beginning but um yeah the song's called ghost train if you've not heard it uh check it out that's where they got their name um and then as far as side projects go um we'll start with prayer for cleansing that's kind of the like first iteration of between the barrier to me um matt what do you think of prayer for cleansing they, this one uh what I kind of actually was going through the different um, side projects because I actually had not listened to some of them before. Uh, this was one of them, and uh, it definitely has early BT Bam like written all over it. If I had no context and someone just started playing this, I would have guessed like, is this like an unreleased BT Bam song, <laughs> or or an early type, you know, like kind of something they were writing but didn't make it onto an album or or something like that. Um, but sure, I, I, sure. I do like them. I mean, it definitely seems a little more like bordering on that extreme metal category than, uh, you know, their current progressive metal take, but, but mm -hmm. I, I do like that, uh, their side project and I definitely want to listen to them a little more now that I've just kind of dipped my toe in the waters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, I think prayer for cleansing, if I'm, if I'm correct, was, like that was between the buried to me before between the buried to me, right? Yeah, I think that was the one that um Tommy Rogers was in. It, I was reading uh up on it a little bit and I think he actually started as a guitarist there, but then they like lost their singer or something and then so he ended up stepping up and doing vocals and then kind of the rest was history from there. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh which kind of brings us to Glass Casket, which is the other one I want to talk about. That's a band that I think that's that's Paul and Dusty. Um, yeah, I and think that's right. I actually discovered them around the same time I discovered Between the Barry to Me. Um, this was back in my LimeWire days where I used to just download 
incredible amounts of music and probably viruses. Um, and <laughs> and that virus. <laughs> and that glass casket record kind of made its way into uh into my music folder. Um, and I didn't know that it had anything to do with Between the Bear to me. So it wasn't until like years later that I found that out. So. Um, I actually listened to them as a separate entity. Obviously, they are a separate entity, but like not knowing that there was any sort of uh, line to draw between the two bands. Yeah, I think this is one that like because Tommy's not the vocalist and stuff that you wouldn't really know. It could just be a band that sounds like BT Bam, but just like imitates their sound. Um, depending on if you looked at like when the albums or album was released. I can't remember how many glass casket has, but um, I only I only remember there. one. I only remember one. It had like a gold cover. That's the only, and that's unless it was a different cover that came through on that LimeWire download. Yeah, these the side projects are definitely something that I don't know too much about when it comes to between the bear to me. So I I wanted to brush up on them at least a little bit and get a feel for their sound before uh, you know, so we knew what we were talking about whenever. Uh, you know, we discussed it on the episode and, uh, I do like Glass Casket and I think that is the project that sounds most like BT Bam out of all of these, at least in my opinion. Prayer for Cleansing was definitely close, but Glass Casket's even closer, I think. Yeah, for sure. Now to go a little further away from, uh, (laughs) from any of that. So Tommy's side project, Giles, is pretty much all electronica. he does some like experimental stuff where it's not as electronica, I suppose. But um, what do you think of Giles? Yeah, I, th- I was listening to his newest, I think it was an EP. Um, and I definitely could see some of the more recent BT Bam stuff, like um, from Coma Ecliptic onward, I'd say. Like a little bit of Automata on there. Um, so he, there were some heavier parts in Giles. Like I wouldn't go so far to say like metal necessarily, maybe like hard rock, but it was definitely very heavily electronica. Um, I don't typically listen to a lot of electronica, but, uh, because it has the BT Bam flavor to it, I, it sold me for sure. I, I listen to him occasionally, like whenever I'll be listening to BT Bam and then Giles is the the one side project that I was very familiar with. Um, so that is one that I'll go over to. And if I'm looking for something a little milder, but still want that, that BT Bam flavor. What about you? I think the first time I heard Giles um, was from this kid that I used to, uh, I used to camp with. Um, my family had like a campground growing up or whatever. And, uh, and the, the same kid also introduced me to like darkest hour and stuff like that. Um, and he was a big between the Barry to me fan. And I think that was back when oh, I don't even remember the name of the, the album. Um, but whenever, whenever his first album released as a side, his first side project record, his first Giles record, I think it was, was it called pulse? Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that's what know. it is. But anyways, it mine. just it just says like Thomas Giles on the on the cover, real big. I just remember that. Um, and he brought it up. Uh, and we listened to it. That was my first exposure to that. Um, I thought it was weird. Um, uh, most of it. <laughs> but uh, I I mean at the time I was just mostly just into metal. So, uh, but there were a couple songs on there that were pretty catchy, and uh, and yeah, I mean it was still tommy rogers so that that part obviously i mean he's a very unique vocalist so uh really anything that he puts like anything any song he's featured on i always go check it out um so you know it's 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 definitely different but uh you know i don't hate it yeah yeah it is definitely different and speaking of of different uh some of these other side projects the next one here uh nova collective uh that's the dan briggs one right? one of one of his yeah, yeah he's, he's got three three yeah <laughs> i forget i know was it, the nova collective is the one that has is that uh also have uh the guy from haken 
Uh, I think or is so. That trio I think... escapes, I which we'll remember. talk about later. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one's which. Um, this this one's the one that's more like metal ish. The, yeah, the Nova Collective the, one. The um, the Nova Collective one is the the heavier like metal jazz, and then Trio Escapes is the like not quite as heavy. It's like more rock jazz, right? But still progressive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I do think uh, I do think that this is the one with the guy from Hagen. Uh, this uh, the Nova Collective. Um, but yeah, so that this one honestly, honestly, all of Dan Briggs' side projects are the ones that I'm most intrigued by. Um, Dan Briggs, I think, is probably like the biggest student of music, uh, in in the band. So it's always really intriguing to see. You know, when you watch videos, too, of just Between the Barry to Me recording, Between the Barry to Me stuff, just seeing his mind work is always really interesting, like, how he approaches writing. Um, so it's it's kind of cool to see that in a different element with uh, Nova Collective Orbs and Trioscapes. Um, yeah, I, but yeah. I agree with that. I, the stuff that Dan Briggs does is, like, I mean, it all... He has his limelight in BT Bam Records, but it's cool to ha- see his side projects and see like what he is capable of in music that's a little more like bass fronted. And, yeah, for uh, sure. And I actually just looked it up. Nova Collective is the one with um with Hagen. Yep. The, um, what's his name? Uh, Richard Henshaw. Yep. From, from yeah, Lincoln. you were right. For sure. I wanted to double <laughs> fact check us there. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I think overall of his three, uh, probably Nova Collective is the one that's probably the the one that between the Barry to me fans would probably gravitate towards the most, um, just because it has more of the metal elements. But if you're into just prog in general and like a good like jazz rock type fuzz rock type feel uh orbs and trioscapes are definitely uh for you as well but also if you just like dan briggs listen to all three yeah orbs has that like it's like very experimental i mean obviously so are nova collective and trioscapes but it seems like it blends some jazz some like 90s grunge with like the vocals kind of gave me a little bit of smashing pumpkins vibes. Um, very like nineties grunge yeah. stuff. Um, that See, one's now, like, and we were, we were questioning why they got their, their, uh, name from accounting crows lyric. And we're comparing some side projects to some nineties. Yeah. That's a good nineties rock. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess they are. It's uh, in there. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. It, it makes sense now that, now that we're, we're talking about it. Uh, but yeah, I think, Orbs is probably the one that is, I guess Orbs and Giles are probably the two most different from BT Bam. So if you're looking for like extended universe BT Bam stuff, probably like Glass Casket, Nova Collective, and Prayer for Cleansing would be your best bets. And then the other ones are like a little more outliers, but still good nonetheless. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, I think we should just get right into this, uh, like, start going through their discography a little bit, you know, the moment we've all been waiting for here. The meat and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the part that I feel a little bit more confident talking about, too, because, you yeah. know, we, we, we did a little bit of research on the on the side projects, you know, outside of the handful of things that we had already heard. Um, but obviously, we've been listening to Between the Barry to Me for a long time, and... Uh, so I think kind of what we should do here is maybe start with the first record, the self-titled, and just uh, give a little bit, you know, talk a little bit about it, how, you know, what it was for us personally, what our favorite couple songs were, and we'll just go through the discography. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Kind of work in reverse chronological order. Or no, I guess that would be chronological order. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. So Confusing self-titled... Myself. The self-titled record. So for me, I actually discovered Between the Barry to Me or was introduced to Between the Barry to Me with the Alaska record. Um, so I actually had to go back 
and listen to the self-titled. Um, and it took me a little while to get there. So um, I think when I did it, for for me, it was very raw sounding, um, as most bands first records are. Um, so it took a little bit for me to gravitate towards or, or to connect with this record um, just because it's not exactly the same as Alaska. I think Alaska and and forward is sort of, you know, Alaska is kind of where they start really honing in on that like progressive metal sound where there's still, you know, a feel for that on this self-titled record. But I think they really started honing their skills on Alaska. Yeah. Um, but that being said, uh, probably my favorite track or the one that stands out to me most is Naked by the Computer, strangely <laughs> enough. What a name. <laughs> and uh, as a person who works in tech, you know, uh, I really relate to the to that song. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the work from home. <laughs> yes, that is that is my existence. But um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like most people look at like more of myself to kill or like aspiration songs like that or shove L or, uh, but for some reason I feel like naked by the computer is like the best glimpse we get at, um, kind of what between the bear to me sort of becomes in the next few records after that. So that's kind of why I gravitate towards that one. Yeah, that's definitely a good track. And the, the title is just hilarious. Like it's just when you're reading the, through the album, and you you see that one, you're like, I I gotta listen to that song. And uh, judging by the Spotify numbers, uh, a lot of people took that strategy because it actually has the most plays on that album. Really? Yeah, it's the two hundred eighty five thousand, and the oh, next wow. highest. I would have thought more of myself, myself to kill. Okay, all right. Yeah. I was gonna say I would I would have thought more of myself to kill was probably the the leader. The only reason Chavanel I feel like is not is because it's probably the longest song on that record. Um, I feel like that's the one, I don't know, I, I like that track as well. Um, and I feel like that's the one that people reference because what the hell is that name? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so for me, Naked by the Computer, just because I think it's the best glimpse into what Between the Barren and Me turns into within the next few records. And then I'd probably go with Aspirations as my second. If I had to pick two on this record, I think that's kind of the mentality, right? If you had yeah, to pick two, if you had to pick two, two tracks, two tracks to put on like a essentials between the bear to me or just like best of type playlist, yeah, I think build, those would those would be own. my two. Yeah, I think I would. Uh, you you mentioned them earlier. I think I would probably go with more of myself to kill and aspirations. Those were the two that I was introduced to on this album first. Um, it's like you, I was introduced to Alaska first and then kind of went back to this album, but those were like the two songs that I heard first. And I think the ones that like stick out to me the most because of that. So I, I would probably put those two on my, uh, my essentials list. Nice. Yeah. And, and just as a re you know, as a whole, that record for me isn't super high up there. Uh, I think partially because I discovered it, you know, later on, uh, even though it was their first record and then also the rawness of it. I appreciate it for sure. But um, they've definitely honed their skills obviously since then. So it's tough to, you know, you look at their, their body of work. It's tough to say, you know, I'm going to go listen to, to that self-titled record when you have so many absolute bangers uh, in their, in their catalog to choose from. So probably closer to the bottom for me, but, um, that doesn't discount uh, how how good of a record it really is. Yeah, I think when you're talking between the bear to me from both of our standpoint, like the worst BT Bam album is still a a solid <laughs> album. It's not like we hate it or anything. It just when they have so many albums and all of them are good, it's like some one of them has to go to the bottom <laughs> or towards the bottom. So. I'm kind of the same way, whereas there are a lot other ones that I, I listen to more and keep heavily in my, my rotation, whereas that one, like, I'll go back to every once in a while, but I'm, it, I don't listen to it heavily. But like I said, I would put the I would put those two songs on my playlist, and if they came on on Shuffle or something, uh, I'm not going to skip it. Yeah. 
That makes sense. But uh, moving on to their second record, Silent Circus. Um, so after being shown Alaska, the song, which was actually the first song that I ever heard from Between the Bear to Me, um, and then sort of listening to a little bit of that record, the second song that I was shown sort of explicitly from my friend Brandon, who was the one who introduced me to the band, um, was Mordecai, which is off of this record, Silent Circus. Um, and for me, that that song is just as good as anything on Alaska. And uh, that's that's kind of a pretty important-ish Between the Barry to Me song for me, just because it was one of the ones I was introduced early on. And uh, I, I played baseball in, in high school, and this was on my like pump-up playlist too. So uh, I was a big fan of that track. And I'm I'm a decent enough fan of this record too. Again, it's hard to compare it to some of the ones we're going to talk about here a little bit later, but overall, this is a solid record. What do you think? Yeah, this one actually, it's before they, they kind of went into the, they're still kind of in the the death, like the the death core kind of ish, uh, vein where they like didn't uh didn't quite get into the as proggy as their uh their more recent albums but um this one i think made a, a leap forward from their self-titled album with that and it kind of went slightly more progressive and so it kind of like straddled that line so i definitely like this album much much more um and for me mordecai was also uh similarly the, the song that i was introduced uh on this album and I really liked that song. So then went through and listened to all of them. I think after having dug into the album though, I'd say aesthetic is my favorite of the, the tracks that would be definitely on my, my list of kind of essentials for, for between the bear to me and then Mordecai would be my second. Those would be my two as well. Um, Oh really? The, the, yeah, for sure. The the album as a whole is good, and I like sort of the, and that's that's sort of a theme with Prague too is, kind of having repeating themes, right? So they have Chevenel take two, on this, which is sort of a a callback to Chevenel cut a flip, which is the closing track on that, on that uh self titled record record. But, um, yeah. Overall, again, this this record doesn't stand out a lot to me um now but at the time this was you know i was in i was listening to you know death metal death core stuff so this was still like a heavily played record for me like early high school so um it does have a special place in my heart but um it's unfortunately probably somewhere close to the bottom as well just because of the body of work like we like we said i mean they've consistently put out pretty fantastic records back to back to back so it's funny how between the bear to me is kind of ages like <laughs> it is it, usually bands it's kind of like people like their first couple albums and then progressively they they like kind of get worse over time because their sound changes so much and people generally don't like it but with between the bear to me i feel like for me personally it's kind of the other way where it's like they just keep getting better. I don't know how they do it. And I, I'm sure there's probably, uh, probably between the Barry to me fans out there that are like, you know, There's silent circus, the silent circus in Alaska records, you know, they might, they might hold firm on those. I feel like everybody sort of, and eh, maybe even the self title, but I feel like a lot of people might or probably have that same mentality of, you know, the first record it's, it's a really raw record. You know, we we appreciate it for what it is, but obviously it's not their best work. But I think there are people that gravitate towards the heavy, like the heavier side of Between the Bear to Me, which I think is sort of really encapsulated in the Silent Circus and Alaska. Um, and they sort of slowly stray away from that. Not completely, obviously, but like yeah. they're not as consistently back to back heavy uh after alaska so i think there are those 
select groups of between the Bear to Me fans that probably gravitate towards those two records and sort of turn their nose up a little bit at, at the newer stuff. So maybe maybe we're in the minority. I don't know. Yeah, we could be. We're in our own little uh, BT band bubble over here. It's possible. <laughs> but uh, let's get to let's get to Alaska here, because yes. that, this was the, this was the record that we were both introduced to first. Um, Alaska, the song was the first song that i had ever heard. And I just remember being blown away by that intro. Yeah, the um, sweet picking, which is where yeah. I also <laughs> figured out or learned what sweet picking was. And also learned that I should put my guitar back in its case and <laughs> just go just on with up. my life. Yeah. But um but yeah, I honestly I was listening to bands like Kill Switch Engage and White Chapel and stuff like that at the time. So like the metalcore, deathcore stuff, and then when that when I was shown Alaska it was like heavier than anything I had been listening to, but also more technical than anything I had been listening to. Maybe the most technical band I was listening to at that point was maybe Black Dahlia Murder. Um, so, yeah. so it really, it really, I don't know, it blew me away. I had to check out the entire record at that point. I've listened to that entire record from start to finish multiple times on bus rides for uh baseball or whatever so uh on alaska for me the record is probably the most nostalgic um one of the most nostalgic records probably period for me uh but alaska the song stands out the most and then selkies of course i feel like that's kind of the easy one to pick out <laughs> yeah but uh I don't know. I had never heard really at that point anything like that, where it can go from heavy to like like just the different, you know, it's like it's almost multiple songs in one, like the change ups and within the within the song, uh, you know, it's very progressive. Uh, you know, progressive music does that a lot, and this was sort of our first introduction to it. So, um, experiencing that definitely was like my gateway into wanting to discover more bands that sound like that. Yeah. That's similar to, to you. And I know like the, the quote unquote boring answer uh, is uh, for me with Alaska being the first song that I was introduced and being blown away by the, the sweet picking. It was just like, what is this madness? And at that time I was mostly into like, hard rock stuff not really yet into metal so this was like quite a leap for me but just hearing that guitar was just like okay this is cool and uh and that was kind of like what got me into listening to i kind of went from listening to this and being blown away and then getting more into metalcore and then kind of like working my way up to <laughs> the heavier stuff again um but alaska and selkies were like the two first songs i was introduced by um by them and uh i think just because of the the nostalgia and the fact that they're like those were the songs that got me into them i definitely put those on my list yeah i mean it would be really hard for me not to put those two songs on my playlist if i had to pick two um but like all bodies was is really good uh backwards marathon is really good the primer I used to listen to the primer and I've, I've tried to remember what game I used to play. It was a shooter. It was for some reason, I'm like, maybe it was just halo, but I was never a big halo guy. So that's why I'm like, it couldn't have been halo, but I used to play, <laughs> I used to play online with, with friends and uh, just have that song on repeat for some reason. So <laughs> like, I, I have a very specific memory of that, but I don't remember the game. So I guess it's not that specific, but I remember the song. So, uh so <laughs> it's tough point. it's tough for me to just pick two, but if I had to like gun to my head, I guess it would be Alaska and Selkies, but I would be really upset that All Bodies and like Backwards Marathon and the Primer didn't make didn't make that list, but um the record as a whole is is really good. Like like we said, it's definitely in that still kind of in that like deathcore-ish, death metal-ish heavy-ish vein as the previous records 
but with songs like Selkies, you definitely see uh you definitely see where they were aiming to go moving forward and uh and I think that's what led into arguably their most popular most I don't know uh cr- like their crowning achievement I guess some would say uh their next record which is uh colors and uh I'm skipping over the anatomy of do we want to talk about the anatomy of uh, I don't think we really really need to just since it is all covers and not their own stuff like you know I mean I guess for people who you know, purists that want us to talk about everything, you know, we could mention it, but I don't know that this is probably an album that people have listened to like a few times through. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that they probably most people keep it on their heavy rotation. It's just kind of cool to see like where they get their inspirations from. Yeah, I agree. Uh, for me, if I had to pick two off of it, just to go down the line, um, just to get through it, um, I'm a big fan of Chris Cornell, so The Day I Tried to Live is sweet. And then a big fan of Queen, so Bicycle Race, they did a cover of that. And honestly, I've shown my dad that cover before, and uh, he's like, they they did a great job. And he's not a fan of, like, you know, metal or just any anything with, like, screaming vocals. He kind of turns turns his nose up at, but he really dug that cover, so... Yeah, I definitely, I would say Bicycle Race for mine, and then I'd say probably Kickstart My Heart is the other one that stands out to me. Like, I would not have guessed that they would have done a cover of uh, really either of those songs. Like, if they were going to do a Queen song, I would have guessed, like, Bohemian Rhapsody or... Which they did. Or We Are the Champions, yeah. (laughs) But but not on, yeah, not on Anatomy Of, but they they did. And I I was so pumped, because they were just doing that you know sidebar they were just doing that uh on a tour just to like kind of close close the show or whatever but then it was so popular that they ended up recording and pressing it on vinyl which i was really pumped that that happened yeah that's really cool but yeah i think just those two are like not songs i would have expected and hearing their covers of them it's like these are these are cool and fun songs to to listen to them play so anytime i do listen to songs off of this album that would be those are the two that i usually listen to for sure but let's let's talk about colors now because that that record this this one is really hard for me to pick two songs off of yeah, um <laughs> it's definitely tough. but uh colors was definitely for me their first foray into just a pure progressive metal record i mean uh Alaska had its moments. Um, Silent Circus even had some glimpses. But this record for me is just one of the quintessential progressive metal records from from front to back. Um, I love the intro, uh, the sort of dual track type situation where, you know, foam born into a decade of statues like that. That's the perfect way to open a record. it's so hard because almost every track on this record is just amazing in my opinion yeah. and informal gluttony is one of my favorite like the way that that song ends leading into son of nothing is so cool son of nothing is probably one of my favorite if not my favorite between the buried and me songs of all time so uh like the live it's probably one of my favorite songs to see live i i went to multiple shows on the colors like 10th anniversary tour and uh that was probably my favorite moment of each each set each time they played uh son of nothing so um obviously that's big for me that that would have to be my first one if i had to pick two and then uh ants of the sky is obviously huge i feel like that was that and prequel to the sequel were probably always like the two that I feel like people would well, because then there's White Walls too, which is like <laughs> always one that they they always close a show not always but often close a show with White Walls. So it's kind of like almost you know not to bring Coheed and Cambria into this, but it's kind of like their Welcome Home ish, um, 
Now I would say Selkies is probably their welcome home, huh? Yeah, I Selkies <laughs> is probably more. I feel like they've got a couple of those though. Like BTK's yeah. got a couple, a couple bangers that they can like consistently just play, and everybody will lose their mind. But this, yeah, but exactly, I agree. But and another thing about this record is this is sort of the first one where I feel like it almost has to be played in its entirety. Like, I mean, you can you can pick songs out, I guess, and listen to them individually, but the song flows together so well from start to finish that it's almost like you're doing yourself a disservice by I not listening to that. the whole record. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it definitely takes away from if you like just pick and choose and you haven't listened to the album from front to back previously like you know if you're just sampling but you've never listened to the whole album like you're not getting the full effect for sure yeah like i'll i'll sometimes go and just listen to son of nothing but i typically always I'll always like uh if I'm on Spotify or something like that, I'll start informal gluttony and like fast forward it to the last like couple of minutes just to hear it lead into it. Um <laughs> but it's just they're both of those songs are so good. Uh man, if I had to pick two, I don't know. Probably honestly just because of how much I really like Son of Nothing, I'd probably pick Informal Gluttony and Son of Nothing just so I can hear the lead in. I feel like those that those are the two <laughs> songs that I go back to and listen to the most um, in this, on this record. So those would be my two, but uh, those are good. Uh, I, good I would want to put the whole record on a, on like a best of playlist. It would be really hard not to for You're me. Breaking but... the rules. <laughs> well, those are my two informal gluttony and son of nothing. <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, son of nothing is definitely my number one. And then I'd probably say answer the sky is my number two. Like, I just love that part. And towards the end with like the banjo and the like it's oh just like everyone kinda the crowded room and yeah, like, yeah, you hear like glasses clinking and like yeah. some background like kind of banter stuff and it just it kinda like paints this I I just picture like a D and D like party, <laughs> you know, like they're all at the tavern after an adventure and uh, you know, being the big nerd that I am. It's like I just picture that in my head and it's just like Oh, I love this. So it's yeah, just like I, just looking at like because I'm currently looking at the record on Spotify and uh, it's taken everything I have not to just like hit play on Son of Nothing. Yeah, I almost but... did it by accident. <coughs> I was like, I was looking as well just so I have the track list <laughs> to help me with deciding, and I like almost clicked one of them, and it's like, oh, that would not go well. Just yeah. Blast it in the middle. Of the... <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. If you know Between the Barry to Me, which probably anybody listening to this does, um, obviously Colors is classic, and uh, we didn't really say anything that, that you probably hadn't already thought or heard somebody else say, but still, it's worth saying again and again, because that record is amazing. Listen to but, the whole damn album. Yes. But uh, a hot take a little bit for me here is to say that they got better on their next record. So, um, uh, they released the great misdirect, which was a six track record. So kind of, I mean, all they have a 17 minute song on it, so it's not a short record, yeah, but I'm um, pretty sure the whole, if you get like the two LP, I'm pretty sure the whole, um, like side D is swim to the just moon. swim to the moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the great misdirect for me, uh, that's probably my, it goes between this and colors, but it's probably my favorite, um, between the bear to me record. Um, I like the sound that they sort of cultivated on this record. It's very much a, it's a cool mix of heavy between the bear to me with like, you know, the slightly almost prog rock ish between the bear to me. Um, they do a lot of interesting things on this record. Like, uh, mirrors and desert of song are you know if you played those on their own you wouldn't necessarily think it was a between the bear to me song which i think is cool this is another record that you're doing yourself a disservice if you're just playing a song one off like this is one of those records again that you have to play from start to finish to sort of get the full effect 
And that's yeah, kind of sure. how that's how I look at this record as well. So, you know, people might say, oh, well, Mirrors and Desert of Song, they're not even metal songs. They're not even heavy, whatever. Um, but the way that they lead into or are led into, you know, as part of the progression of the record, I think just fits perfectly with the soundscape and sort of the story that they're telling through the music. And uh, I don't know, man, this one just this one just hits for me. I, I connect pretty hard to this record. What about you? Yeah, it's I I feel like Colors is still my favorite one but great misdirect i do listen to a lot i have it on on vinyl and i do find myself listening to it quite a bit i think it just like hit at that time in my life that it's like kind of i you know with being 2009 would have been like our senior year of high school so like remember it's like thinking about graduating and going to college and there's like kind of that time of your life. So I feel like there's that special like sentimental value that's added to this album. It definitely puts it up there. And then, you know, like you said, the, the way each song flows into one another, but yet each song is so different. Um, this, this album is just like beautiful chaos. <laughs> For it's honestly a better way to describe it. it. It's honestly the first record that like sort of transported me within my own head to like somewhere else. Like I don't know where it took me, but like when I listen to this record, like lights off, eyes closed, like th- it takes me somewhere. Like colors, colors can do that too, I suppose. But this was the first one that really like hit me like that. Um, and I don't, again, I don't know. Like you said, maybe it is with just the timing, like when it was released versus where we were at in our lives or whatever. But I don't know. I think it's just the the changes and just sort of the the trip that they take you on on this record that that did it for me. Um, with six songs, it makes it kind of easier to pick two, I guess you would think, but um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I have my two, I guess, uh, and that would be disease, injury, madness, because I that's probably my favorite track on this record. Um. I just really like the the dueling guitars towards the end is really cool. All the different like changes within the song, you know, between the Barry Me does it a lot. We kinda already said it, but you know, it sounds like four songs in one almost. Um just that that song for me probably hits the most. And then uh, I would probably pick Swim to the Moon because that's just classic. And uh that song also takes you on a journey and uh it's funny because every time i'm at the beach like if the moon's like over the ocean or whatever and it casts that little like reflection the whole way to the sand uh, that's the first song that pops into my head so uh, yeah that is like the image that i have in my head when i listen to the to that song as well it's just like you looking out from from the ocean into the the horizon and you see the the moon reflected in in the water that's that's a pretty uh, prominent image that I get in my head as well whenever I'm listening to it. I also would say that's one of my two songs as well. Um, I think for my second one, I'd probably go with Fossil Genera or Genera. I'm not sure exactly on the pronunciation, but I just love how weird that song is. Like with it the, is pretty weird. The clown music and. I don't know, just the the title, A Feed from Cloud Mountain. I just, like, I get this weird image in my head of, like, some, like, weird, creepy clown overlord from, like, a satellite in space. It's, <laughs> it's just strange but awesome at the same time. So yeah, I, I, I enjoy that was. song as well. It's probably, like, if I had to give, like, I'd probably put Obfuscation ahead of it. So it would probably end up being like four for me. Although Mirrors and Desert of Song are really cool in their own right, too. Sometimes I'll go and listen to just one of those songs if I'm just looking for that Between the Bear to Me-ish sound, but not like heavy. I'll listen to Mirrors or Desert of Song. But uh, but regardless, this this album is just one of those ones. You just have to play it from start to finish. And uh, I I typically always do. If I'm going to listen to a song on this record, just one song i typically will go listen to disease injury madness though but 
but yeah, this this and colors for me bounce between one and two, but I would say most often this is my favorite between the Buried to Me record. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the other way where I'd say most often colors, but there are definitely times where I'm like I listen to Great Misdirect and think maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe maybe Great Misdirect is better. Yeah, and it, again, it's just listening to the records like front to back, just the trip that it takes me on that I think kind of raises like raises it above colors. But Son of Nothing is still my favorite between the Bear to Me song. <laughs> yeah, I I think there is something with Great Misdirect. It's like more narrative. I don't know. It feels like more like you're listening to a book, and it definitely I think has like more imagery while you're listening to it than than colors does. Like in my head, anyways. But just the the songs on colors just are so good. So that's why it holds the number one, I think, for me. That makes sense. Um, another another record. Well, so I guess we'll go to. I always group these two together, um, and that's the EP, the Parallax EP, Hypersleep Dialogues, and then uh, Parallax Two Future Sequence. I always group these two together, um, but I guess we should talk about them as separate entities since they are. Um, but I know the Parallax Records projects, whatever you want to call them, um, get a lot of praise as well. I know a lot of people put like Parallax Two or just Parallax if they also view them as like a singular entity like I do for some reason. Um, at, at the top of, of all of Between the Bear to Me's collected works. Uh, for me, I don't, I don't put them above Colors or Great Misdirect, but I can understand the hype because these records are fantastic, uh, the EP and the record. Um, so talking about Hypersleep Dialogues, what do you think? Uh, I, this was actually one where I had kind of like my musical tastes had changed a bit and I kind of wasn't listening to between the bear to me quite as much. Um, and I actually kind of like, I guess I, I didn't miss that it came out, but it was like, it came out, I had listened to it and then kind of like forgotten about it. So it's, it's actually kind of a, an album that I think I've slept on more than the other ones. Not that it's bad by any means, but, I think it's just one that I never really listened to a ton. And since it's like kind of out of sight, out of mind that I just haven't really given it its fair number of listens. Um, but if I had to, are we, are we picking two on this three track EP? <laughs> or are we just going to go with one? Uh, probably just pick one. Okay. For me, I would say probably specular reflection is, is the most standout track on that one you know it's the the first track so it kind of hits you and hits the ground running with it with that one and that's for me is kind of the one that i think has the most staying power out of all of them it's also the the longest on there too so that's probably another reason why i remember it more <laughs> makes sense yeah like like you said um so parallax hypersleep dialogues when it came out um i didn't connect with this as much as I did with Great Misdirect and, you know, as I said, I really connected with the Great Misdirect. I mean, that, that had a huge impact on me. So um, I probably didn't listen to this EP enough at the time, but uh, after they released Parallax 2, I listened to it a lot more and I did appreciate it, especially in the context of like, you know, having the, the larger body of work with uh, Parallax 2. Um, it, it it's an interesting sort of um stepping stone to get to Parallax Two from Great Misdirect. I think it kind of fits. Um, and I mean it's still between the bear to me for sure. Uh, and Lunar Wilderness is probably the song that I would pick. Uh, that was probably the one that I gravitated towards the most, and I think honestly because it was the easiest to digest for me. Uh, maybe that's because it's the shortest track on the EP, coming in at eight minutes and twenty two seconds, which is still a crazy long song. So <laughs> it's funny uh, to say that's the <laughs> shortest. Yes, yes, that is. I mean, it's like a, it's three songs and it's still like thirty minutes long. So yeah, it's um, like almost not an EP, and with yeah. like runtime. Yeah, for sure. 
but uh but yeah probably probably not the record or not the you know the thing that i would gravitate towards the most with in between the buried Me's catalog but i do group it with parallax too so um parallax 2 for me we might as well start talking about that is probably right below um colors and great misdirect uh just a step below for me it it doesn't really contend for that top spot but um i love again one of the one of the things that i really enjoyed about colors and great misdirect is sort of the lead in to the record um colors having foam born and then leading right into decade of statutes and uh statues and uh uh great misdirect having mirrors into obfuscation uh this one having goodbye to everything leading right into astral body i think was just as epic of an intro as those two records um astral body is probably one of the songs that i go back and listen to the most um and probably what really brought me back to uh being excited about new between the buried and me music since I didn't really connect with the EP as much. What do you think? Yeah, this this was actually like where I had kind of come back when I saw like, oh, it's a f- the full album. Like, oh, and it's a sequel to the EP. Like, what what is going on here? And kind of it got me excited and I had come back and Astral Body was the first song that I had heard. Um, I think it may have been like a, one of the singles that they released prior to the album maybe yeah i think they had like a visualizer video or something too that i for some reason i'm picturing maybe that didn't exist maybe i just made it up in my brain but um i think they had like some kind of visual or visualizer video uh for that yeah I, I do remember at the very least like maybe the album was already out and but i remember watching the astral body music video on youtube um and it's one that i i listened to it and immediately restarted it and listened to it again um that song is definitely the standout one on that album for me uh that would be definitely one that i would put on my my list and uh i'd say then probably right behind there for me would be the extremophile elite be uh my next song i really like goodbye to everything and the way it fades into astral body so that was kind of like my toss up between uh doing goodbye to everything into astral body or you know i definitely i also really like extremophile elite so trying to pick between those three was tough yeah so one of the one of the songs that i really enjoy seeing live is telos so it's hard for me to not pick that one but i also really enjoy silent flight parliament um, and I think what kind of made it even, cause that was probably a song that I didn't listen to as much, especially since it's the longest song on the record and it's like 15 minutes. So that's a commitment, but, uh, there's a video of them doing it, uh, like in a studio with, with, uh, some like other string instrument musicians and stuff like that. Like not an orchestra, but like, you know, just a few other musicians. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to think when that if that video came out like how much further after the record that video came out but I think that's what made me rediscover that song and now I probably watch that video a good you know probably more than I stream anything off of this record really um I really enjoy that video so I and going back and listening to the recording I really enjoyed this song in general so if I had to pick two it would be tough. It would be either Astral Astral Body and Telos or Astral Body and Silent Flight Parliament. Uh those are good choices. Yeah, yeah but that album's really I, good. Te- Telos, again, that's that's one of one of my favorite songs to see them play live. Um I've seen it a handful of times and uh yeah, I think I guess gun to my head. I'd pick Astral Body and Telos. Final answer. <laughs> Lock in those lyrics. <laughs> But uh, I'm still going to watch that Silent Flight Parliament video. <laughs> That's not That doesn't go on the playlist, so that's like a, a sort of backdoor in that one in. <laughs> Cheat codes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, again, overall, this is probably just below those two for me. But uh, this next record, I think, is an interesting challenge to that. 
Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't agree or won't agree, but I think you will. Uh, Coma Ecliptic is really sort of a a new take on their progressive metal sound to where they really experiment a lot, in my opinion, with the softer side of their progressive metal sound. Um, there's This is definitely probably the least heavy between the Bear to Me record, in my opinion, unless you count parts of Great Misdirect, I suppose. But uh, what do you think? Yeah, this one is... This is probably number three of the albums for me. I love the just the eighties like synth feel that is just so present in, in this album. And they definitely from this album, I think they kind of, they kind of kept some of that and you can definitely see like samples of that in the future albums. But this is where like this album just screams eighties. And, but then it also has that, you know, modern prog to it as well. Um, and it's just like such a cool combination. And uh, f- for me, uh, Dim Ignition, like even though it's super short and it's sort of more of a prelude into Famine Wolf, I just, I love the synth in that song. And so for my two, like I almost want to pick Dim Ignition into Famine Wolf, but. Uh, but since it's kind of more of a transitional track than it is like a full track on its own, I'd probably go with uh, Famine Wolf and King Redeem Queen Serene. Because Famine Wolf kind of like picks up with like the fade in from Dim Ignition. So, you know, you can still count it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I'm using this an... code now. <laughs> that's fine. They're they're permitted. We make the rules. Um. This is another record that like takes you on a journey. I feel like all of their records post like I mean from Colors forward, maybe with the exception of Automata, the the double record because just how segmented that record is or those records are. But this is another record that sort of takes you on a journey. Um and, you know, again, you're doing yourself a disservice not listening to it front to back. Uh and I that's something that I really enjoy. So for me, my favorite parts of this this journey in particular are probably King Redeem, Queen Serene. I really love the the changes in sound uh, throughout that track. Um, and then Memory Palace, I think, is an extremely underrated Between the Bear to Me song. I think that's right up there with any of the heavy hitters. Um, and probably my favorite song on the record. Uh, and just uh, something else to note, too, because I think this is cool. Um, they did a tour with the Deer Hunter. And uh, I guess, I mean, those guys are fans of, of one another. It makes sense. I know I read an article at one point where I think it was Tommy. Uh, they asked him what his like top 10 progressive rock albums of all time were. And I think he said Act 3 by The Deer Hunter was like number one or top five or something like that. Um, So oh, wow. they toured. Yeah, they toured with each other, which is cool. But even cooler, the VIP package, you got a seven inch split vinyl where they each covered one of the other songs. And uh, Deer Hunter covered Rapid Calm off of Coma Ecliptic, which was really cool to hear. And then uh, Between the Bear to Me covered The Tank by Deer Hunter. If you've not heard uh, The Tank or if you've not listened to The Deer Hunter, I'd say if you're a Between the Bear to Me fan, probably their most accessible record is Act 3. Yeah, The Tank is such a good song. It is. It's, it's, it's an acquired taste to a degree. Um, I, I would say for a, for a metal fan, for a Between the Bear to Me fan, I would say the Deer Hunter might be an acquired taste, but, uh, Act 3 is a good spot to start, and there's a song called Incada Venom, I do not even going to try to pronounce that, um, and that's probably a good track to start with, uh, and, yeah, if you, if you check that out, you, you might enjoy it, but definitely look up the... It's probably on YouTube somewhere. I don't think it's on Spotify. 
but uh, you could probably find the the two versions uh, of each band covering each other's songs. So those are super cool. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that since it is kind of in there. You know, it's in BT Bam lore. BT Bam. Uh, BT Bam extended lore. <laughs> extended universe. BT Bam. Um. But yeah, Coma Ecliptic for me, I probably wrestles with Parallax for that like third spot. But I do like the journey it takes you on. And uh, for that, it probably is third. But yeah. And did I pick my two songs? Yeah, King Redeem and then Memory Palace. Yeah, for I was sure. Gonna say. Unless you, but, were, uh, uh, you were making a change on the fly or something, you definitely. <laughs> no, no changes. No changes. Those are my two. Um, which brings us to Automata 1. Which I hate that this is a double album. I don't like this. Uh, <laughs> I always, I always just consider it one record, Automata, and uh, that's the way it probably should have been. I don't understand why this was split up. I feel like it was explained at one point, but I feel like there's a lot of people that say it was just for like marketing or something like that, which I don't think was the band's potentially the band's decision. It might have been a label's decision. I don't know, but regardless. It's two parts, so we're going to treat it that way. So, Automata 1 was the first one to come out. Uh, In my opinion, it's the lesser of the two, even though it has six tracks as opposed to four, which is what the second one has. Um, Condemned to the Gallows was the single. I think for a lot of people, whenever this track came out, it was kind of like a return to form, especially for the folks who liked the heavier Between the Bear to Me, like the Alaska-ish sound. Um... Which I also enjoy, so I mean, it it was still between the bear to me for me, um, even though I do gravitate towards like what people would consider their quote unquote softer records, which would be, uh, Coma Ecliptic and, uh, uh, Great Mister X. Sorry, my brain just like shut off for a hot second there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh. But yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed hearing it. I, I, I like when bands sort of, you know, they go on a journey, but then they come back to form. I'm hoping some other bands kind of do that a little bit too. Uh, the contortionist is one that I think of off the top of my head, which is, they definitely take a lot of inspiration from between the barrier to me, but, um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I was excited when I heard this single and what, what did you think, Matt? Uh, this one for me, um, I kind of, because they came out in the same year, um, it was similar to Parallax 1 and Parallax 2. I kind of like slept on Automata 1 and then saw that Automata 2 was out, and I was like, wait a minute, there's two of these already? It's like, what did I miss? And uh, kind of went back, and I do feel like Automata 1 was inferior to automata 2 um but condemned to the gallows is is a very good song and i do agree that it kind of is like you know they took a pretty wide veer with coma ecliptic and then condemned to the gallows kind of brought them back onto their (laughs) their previously trodden course yeah Um, because i think coma coma gets a lot of hate i feel like in the between the bear to me community does it i feel like it does I feel like I've seen that a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of people kind of shit on that record, and uh, and then I tend I to like stay out of like forums and stuff because I oh, I always seem to have like weird takes that people don't like, and then it just like ends up making me feel sad because everyone else is like this <laughs> album sucks, and I'm like oh, so <laughs> I usually just stay out of that that stuff. So I don't really know how people feel about it but. yeah i feel like i've seen that record get a lot of hate but um but yeah i think condemned to the condemned to the gallows from what i remember a lot of people felt like this was a return to form which i can see that um but then millions was the second single and i i enjoy millions a lot but um i think a lot of people heard that song and was like okay well now we don't know what we're gonna get um but Blot is very heavy, and that's a 10-minute track. Yellow Eyes is pretty heavy. That's a eight-and-a-half-minute track. So um, for me, this record was definitely sort of a step back towards heavier between the Barry to me while still remaining, you know, still kind of staying true to their prog metal roots. Um, 
but I didn't connect a lot with this record. But I, I'm pretty sure Condemned to the Gallows was nominated for a Grammy. Is that the one, or was it Millions? One of those two was nominated for a Grammy. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't remember which which one, but I, I do know that they were nominated off of this album. Yeah, they, they so didn't end up winning, which is right? cr- no, they didn't win. But it's that's so crazy to me that all of the cr- ridiculous records that came before this, and it took it took Automata one yeah. for them to get like nationally recognized. But I don't know. But anyways, it's funny because like to me, these are like I mean they're not they're not terrible albums by any means, but these are probably like lower on my list of. BT Bam albums, so it's just like how if these are the ones that you, it's kind of like you want to tell the people that was it for the the Grammys like tell people well if you if you like this song boy do I have something for you right I know see and for me when Automata Two came out that has the best track on the on the collective probably the best two tracks on the collective. Uh, in Voice of Trespass and Proverbial Bellow. Uh, yeah. And I that too. so, yeah, I, I, I was confused by that, but I do I do get it. I think Condemned to the Gallows is pretty accessible for like metal fans in general, whereas Between the Buried and Me as a whole might not be. So I can kind of understand why they were, you know, nominated on that track for, you know, best yeah. metal, best metal song or whatever the hell it was it was for but um if i had to pick two songs off automata one it would be condemned to the gallows and millions those are the two that i listen to the most and uh yeah i could see an argument for like house organ or blot too though but uh, i didn't i'm not a big fan of yellow eyes to be honest and gold distance is just i think an interlude into blot so um yeah i I was kind of the same way yellow eyes is uh i i found it kind of like a strange song um but condemned to the gals is definitely my one and then it's tough between millions and blot i guess i'd I'd probably go with blot we gotta pick the long the long but yeah (laughs) if if it was a collective though if we were if this was automata one and automata two just became automata my two songs would be Proverbial Bellow and Voice of Trespass. So nothing off of one would even make it into that playlist. Yeah, that's but, that's exactly what I would choose um, as well. So Automata, Automata 2, 2 like because we're forced to look at it as a separate entity, for me, this is some of their best work. Um, but because of how short it is, I I struggle putting it you know, anywhere above some of those larger bodies of work. I mean... Swim to the Moon is all is half this record, so <laughs> it's like you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. It's it's tough to it's tough to put it above anything else in their catalog, but um, you can tell that Dan Briggs had his hands all over this record. Um, I really get sort of Dan Briggs's flavor in this record. Uh, the bass really stands out especially in like Voice of Trespass and Proverbial Bellow, which are, in my opinion, the two best songs on the record. Those would be on my on the playlist. Um, Voice of Trespass takes you on a journey, man. I mean, the it's like you're on a crazy, like off the rails circus train. Like, I don't know how <laughs> else to put it, but like it is probably one of it's it's up there in my top 10 between the Barry to me songs, I think. It's funny you say about it taking you on a ride, which like I completely agree with, but it's just looking at like the track run times, it's it's second from the shortest on there. So saying that it's like such a wild ride, but when the proverbial bellow is thirteen minutes and voice of trespass is like just under eight. So it's like almost half of the length, but a much wilder ride. Yeah, it, it is it is definitely and yeah, Proverbial Bellow is again is an amazing song too, but yeah, just something about the the tone, like the sound of Voice of Trespass. I'm always picturing like in my head like those 
old like black and white cartoons where it shows like the train just like flying like down the track <laughs> and there's like people like waving their hands out. I don't know why that's what I picture when I hear the beginning of this song, but that's what I picture every time. I people don't know why. People glimpses inside our weird heads <laughs> with all these pictures. It painting. makes no sense, but it that just I don't know. It sounds like a like a crazy wild off the rails train ride with circus animals and I don't know why this is what's coming out of my mouth, but um <laughs> but it yeah i don't know man it's 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 a trip for sure and i wish i wish we had more of that style i get i honestly just wish it was this whole thing was one record and maybe it would flow better and i don't know but um the sound you get on automata 2 and just i guess proverbial bellow and voice of trespass on their own really stand out from the automata dual records and if it was one record and those two songs were the highlights, it might be, you know, top five between the Bear to Me records. Yeah, if only they had combined them. <laughs> yeah, but separate <laughs> separate I just struggle putting putting either of them up there. But uh I I would die I'll die on the hill of Voice of Trespass being the top ten between the Bear to Me song. That's uh that's not a risky hill to die on, I don't think. That's a that's a solid song. That's why I was willing to say it. I do value <laughs> my life to some degree. Um, <laughs> but uh, this brings us to the last record. Uh, the most recent record came out last year. We talked about it a little bit on our uh, Albums of the Year uh, podcast episode. Um, probably talked about it in a little bit more detail than we will here since we're kind of running down this list here. Uh, but Colors 2, when this was announced... I think my head like partially exploded. I'm still here, so clearly didn't fully explode. But um, I thought that was an in- insane risk to take naming a record Colors 2 whenever you know that your fan base sort of reveres Colors 1 um, to say, hey, we're going to follow that up. We're going to make a sequel. Uh, you know, as we know in pretty much every medium out there, the sequel is almost always worse. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> it does tend to be the case. But, you know, whenever you name it Colors 2 and that's your best record and you've made, you know, nine records to this point and, you know, six since Colors, that was, a, that was an interesting statement to make. Do you think it lived up to the name? Uh, I do. I mean, I definitely, it's, I don't think it's as good as Colors 1. But I don't think that, like, them naming it Colors 2 made it a disappointment or anything. I definitely, I, I see that that it has so much of Colors 1 in it, but yet it also kind of takes some of their other newer albums and mixes a little bit of that flavor in. Like, I can kind of see a little the Automata mixed into it. Um, so it kind of takes parts of it, but I definitely think it is true to the color's name, and uh, it definitely has a lot of really good tracks on. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if it lives up to colors. I mean, you said the same thing. It doesn't. You know, it's definitely not better than colors. It's. I wouldn't even put it on par with colors. I wouldn't put it. I probably wouldn't put it top three between the Bear to Me records. But that being said, it's very good um <laughs> it is another record as is kind of the theme with between the bear to me post ala post alaska um you know listening to it from front to back is a lot better than just picking out songs sometimes it doesn't even make sense whenever you pick just start a song in the middle um but uh but yeah i mean quality wise they really went all out on this record um i like the callbacks to colors there's a few of them um and uh and yeah i i would have liked a little more i would have liked something how do i say this i would have liked another song like swim to the moon like i don't know (laughs) (laughs) where like i mean obviously that's not colors but like i would have liked something epic but like mixing in different sounds and i mean i guess we get that to a degree 
just just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think I just I had my 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 like expectations were really really high as were probably everyone's um with the name and the first track that they released fix the air i felt when i heard that that it i was going to be a disappointment to a degree i thought the drumming was amazing i think this record has blake written all over it where how i said uh automata 2 had dan briggs written all over it i think blake's flavor is all over this record um I think this is probably one of his best records. Um, yeah, he they definitely. Do, uh, they do a lot of a lot of experimentation with sounds and stuff like that, which I know they did a lot of on Colors. So I guess that makes sense as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know what more I was looking for. I guess I just set the bar too high. <laughs> I think that's like kind of the nature of having it Colors too. It's a they gave themselves a lot to live up to and they kind of set their their bar high so i feel like inevitably some people are going to feel like ah oh, it didn't quite live up to it and you know i'm kind of in that ballpark too but there is a lot to enjoy on this album still uh for me i would say uh never seen future shock i i really enjoy that track um and I would say the future is behind us as well. Those are probably like my two favorite, but I mean, I enjoyed fix the air. I know you said you weren't quite as excited about it. Like that was kind of with being the first single you felt underwhelmed, but I enjoyed that song. Um, not quite as much as the other two, obviously, but still. Also yeah. I, I enjoyed it too. Um, don't get me wrong. I didn't dislike it or anything like that. I just felt like, with how many epic tracks are on colors, you know, it nothing on this record lived up to like son of nothing to me. Um, you know, nothing lived up to ants of the sky. Um, yeah, you know, there was, there was no, there was no song that I like look at on this record that I go back to pick out and say, like, I need to listen to this song where I'll often do that for like informal gluttony, son of nothing, ants of the sky prequel white walls the whole record so it's you know i i don't know probably my favorite song and i think maybe it's because of the callback is uh uh bad habits so it has that like sleep on fly on in our minds we can fly yeah line in the in the end which is one of my one of my favorite moments of colors for sure um, so it was cool to see that callback. So for me, that's probably one of the songs I would put on. And then the other would probably be uh, Double Helix of Extinction. I like monochrome leading into that song. Um, so I, it does keep with the theme of uh, sort of the intro two tracks flowing together and being a nice introduction to the to the record. Yeah. I also I like uh prehistory that has that like cartoon like bonk sound and like Oh yeah. And some of the samplings they do in here I think are like funny, but also they work well with the, the track. Like there aren't a ton of bands that I feel like pull off the sound bite thing well, but between the bear to me seems to seems to do it. And maybe it's just because I just love everything that they they do. So maybe I'm just uh just like my bias, but I just I always enjoy the weird things that they inject into their music to see like yeah. how they can try and push their music into different territories. Yeah, hence uh choosing like fossil genera and yeah. uh, <laughs> uh dim ignition into famine wolf and <laughs> Yeah, I <laughs> You like I, the you like the what different can I say? stuff. I'm a, I'm a weird guy. It's all good. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely cool. I mean, I like uh, disease, injury, madness, and that has that like horse sound in it, right? Where like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like towards towards the end or whatever. Like, I always think that that's hilarious. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess for me that this record was good. I I it didn't exceed my expectations, but my expectations were probably too high. Um, and probably because of the name, but 
I do think bad like bad habits was really cool to have that call back. Um, I thought it was really cool. And I know there's some other both like musical and lyrical callbacks to that record and from this one as well, which I think is is cool. Um and honestly, uh never seen Future so- Future Shock is a really good record too. Um or really good track too. Uh but I, I think I'm sticking with uh Double Helix of Extinction and Bad Habits as my two. Those are solid, solid picks as well. Yeah, what uh, to switch from from discography a little bit? Uh, how many times have you seen Between the Bear to Me Live? Uh, I think it's it's only been twice, and I can't for the life of me remember who I saw them with um the second time. But the the one that I do remember and is one of my favorite shows was the Animals as Leader um contortionist between the bear to me show where uh where it was like their coma ecliptic tour that that you and I actually went together yeah to that's see right anyone. yeah that they was... closed with Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> yeah and and they played uh Famine Wolf so I was oh yeah that's that. right and, yeah uh, I yeah, it was, that was a sweet show just such I a probably... good mix of bands too yeah, that is that is a really cool mix. I've probably seen them probably approaching double digits if I'm not in double digits. Um that tour with you is really cool. Uh one because of the company, of course, but also Aww. I really I really liked seeing them play <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. That was really cool. Um I saw them tour with Coheed and Cambria and Russian Circles, which I think is really cool. Oh, that's a really of, cool show. Because of how big of a fan I am of Coheed and Cambria and how big of a fan I am of Between the Bear to Me, that was that was awesome. That was right around when Parallax dropped and when uh, Coheed dropped their Afterman records. So it was kind of like a fitting uh, blend there of not necessarily sounds, but... Uh, of like themes in a in a way, <laughs> the, the yeah. like space theme, I suppose. Um, I love Russian circles too. I'm Russian they circles were the opener, is really right? cool. They were the opener. Yep, yep, and yeah, they they put on a great show. Um, man, I've seen them with the contortionist a bunch of times. Uh, which I'm a big contortionist fan. I've seen them with animals as leaders a bunch of times. But uh, yeah, probably the two shows for me are are the one with you with when they close with Bohemian Rhapsody and then the one with Coheed. But uh, I try to I try to catch them on. Oh no, I got another one when they <laughs> toured with De- when they toured with Deer Hunter and Leprous. That was sweet. Oh, that is a really cool. Lineup Which too. Yeah, we semi talked about that a little bit in this episode already about the Deer Hunter split uh, seven inch where they covered each other's songs or whatever. But that tour was really cool. Um. And then the colors, the colors tour, the tenth anniversary tour with the contortionist. Uh, I saw that a couple times. Once in New York, once in Pittsburgh, and maybe, maybe in Baltimore. Um, maybe in Cleveland. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I've seen everywhere. them in a, yeah, I've seen them in a bunch of places. <laughs> so I've seen them in like North Carolina. I've seen them in, uh. Maryland, I've seen them in Ohio, I've seen them in Pennsylvania, and I've seen them in New York. But uh yeah, I I definitely try to catch as many of, of their shows as I can. Being married now, it's a little bit you know, being married and having a lot more adult responsibilities in my life, <laughs> it's a lot harder to do the whole multiple show thing. But yeah, uh you can't follow them around. But you know, if they're playing Cleveland on a Saturday, I might go. You know, if they're playing, you know, Baltimore on a Saturday, I might go. But yeah, uh, that'd be worth the drive, it's a, especially they they seem to always have such a cool lineup of bands when they when they tour. So it it would be awesome to see them when they yeah uh, they they get a you. cool they get a cool mix even when it's not just all progressive metal they get you know they'll tour with the Deer Hunter which is awesome they toured with Coheed which is awesome Leprous which is awesome so it's like. You know, they're not always just torn with metal bands. They are they get an interesting mix. Yeah. I hope they uh they go on, like, a, a tour here shortly. Yeah, definitely keeping an eye out for that. And uh, 
And yeah, I think uh, that sort of sums up for the most part what we wanted to talk about here. Um, apologies if it was semi-low energy. We're recording this late night here. <laughs> yeah, it is a late recording. It's burning. Burning the midnight I had a oil. Solid nap beforehand, though, so I should be all right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got back from seeing uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness. So spent a spent a good amount of time in a dark theater, and then you know. <laughs> I like and can't I also... make it through those movies anymore in a dark theater without falling asleep in those comfy chairs. <laughs> yeah, we're pleasures we're of both, being old i guess i was gonna say we're both uh fortunate and unfortunate that you know now all theaters have those freaking like lazy boy recliners but yeah, uh just rest in my eyes <laughs> but um but yeah and then last night i stayed up all night watching uh the second half of uh the last season of ozark so you know it's uh we, we we did our best you know we, we powered <laughs> we powered through for uh for the for the greater good here and that we also funny story about this, and I don't know if you were gonna mention this, but I'll I'll go ahead and say it. But we uh we rec- this is the second time we recorded this episode. Yeah, yeah, it was uh <laughs> we weren't sure if this episode was gonna make it. We were uh, also having some struggles uh before starting this recording too. So uh we were thinking that the uh artist spotlight of BT Bam was a, a cursed episode that may never come to be. So hopefully uh. Everyone enjoys it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing, too. You know, ener- energy levels might have been a little lower, too, because this is the second time we ran through this. I think so. We took a little bit of video of the first time, and I might put together some like blooper stuff. <laughs> I, I started to do that and then ended up like not finishing that whole project situation. But, uh, but yeah, I might put together some some clips of of the original of the, the episode that never came to be. <laughs> we I feel like we were we were higher higher energy on the first take, but yeah, uh, you know we we tried it, here. We did our best. <laughs> it definitely was a uh, hit to the morale whenever I looked at the uh, the recording and saw that it didn't record my voice. <laughs> like, and in uh, the middle of it, in the middle of it, because we're experimenting with doing video, in the middle of it. Uh, one of the GoPros just started going crazy and just started beeping. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it wasn't because the battery was dead because there was like 82% left in it. So I grabbed it. It was like burning hot and on it it said like overheated. So it shut off because it overheated. Yeah, I didn't want to uh, like liquefy the internal <laughs> components. <laughs> so this was just, uh, you know, it's a it's a labor of love. But, you know, we, we, uh, we trucked through. It was... Yeah, it just it, was... it feels right that between the bear to me is the first in the series of the artist spotlight. Like they they just they belong there. So, you know, we we had to make it the first one. So even though it took a second recording, it was worth it. At least yeah. I think so. For sure, for sure. And you know, if we don't come off as excited uh, about talking about between the bear to me as we should, I promise you, we love between the bear to me. This is just uh, you know. <laughs> take take two late yeah. night you know but hey we we did it and uh we love you between the bear to me and we can't wait to catch another show uh whenever you guys come back through pittsburgh hopefully yes. that happens um but like Very like sweet. i said if you don't come through pittsburgh you know make sure that like the cleveland or baltimore dates are saturdays <laughs> <laughs> Please I, I, and thank you. I could also drive to buffalo on a saturday that's fine too <laughs> but uh that's probably where where the saturdays uh speak it into existence yeah. and maybe we'll have it. <laughs> it's worked before but yes, um <laughs> but all right guys well again thank you so much for listening to us uh we we did our best here and uh we're gonna do more <laughs> we're gonna do more of these artist spotlight episodes um, i promise hopefully... i won't forget to record my, <laughs> my, my hopefully mic. hopefully in one take from now on which is fine and uh and yeah, I think maybe the next one we do might be Coheed and Cambria. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I think you um maybe to like time it around their their new album release. Um and we can kind of see where it stacks up and what our favorite songs are and kind of talk about the new record as well as um their very vast discography as well. It, it definitely seems like the next logical step for bands. I mean, they've had a uh a feature in every episode of our podcast so far 
into one. I'm gonna continue. Another. I'm continuing that too. That's gonna be my thing. So. <laughs> it's the running. I'm Easter gonna. Egg. I'm gonna find a way. But uh, but yeah, I think we're also gonna try to do a giveaway. Um, right now I'm thinking it's gonna be a uh, probably a Key of Z comic signed by Claudio Sanchez. I think that's what I'm looking at. Uh, as as the giveaway. So, this isn't like the official announcement that that's gonna be the case, but uh consider this live. yeah consider this like a little teaser you know there's gonna be a giveaway it's gonna be something signed by claudio sanchez which i think is uh worth worth giving us a follow for uh but yeah, uh so keep your eye follow the yep. the socials follow our uh our podcast too please and uh and give us a rating it helps on the uh on the charts get us discovered and you know hopefully get other people who like progressive music in into listening and maybe uh you know share their music with us and hopefully we can share some with with them as well absolutely so thank you guys again uh like follow subscribe all those things and uh we'll catch you next time thanks <laughs>